Hello guys, welcome back. In this video I'm going to continue my long range video series. I have done my first test flights with my long range quads and now I want to share my first results with you. First I'm going to show you a flight with the iFlight HL7 with a T-Motor F80 Pro. I have used a 4S battery for all of my test flights. On the second flight I have used the T-Motor F80 Pro on my iFlight XL7 and after that I have installed the Racerstar RB2514 motors on my iFlight HL7 and the XL7. By the way, I have already tested the T-Motor F4 and F7 but I couldn't notice a significant difference between both FCs on my first test flights. In the end I have decided to use the T-Motor F7 for my HL7 in order to get the smoothest flight performance and a quad comparable to my iFlight XL7 with the Dallas C F722. At the end of this video I'm going to show you the quad with a frame and motor combination that works best to get the smoothest flight performance. Spoiler, it's the iFlight XL7 with the Racerstar Air B motors. I'm also going to do a test flight with two 1500 mA 4S batteries connected in parallel to get a 3000 mA battery. For this I have built a XT60 connector. I'm using Betaflight 4.1.1 on both of my test quads with the most reliable and recommended RPM filter settings. Therefore I'm running D-Shot 300 on a 4K 4K pit and gyro loop time. I'm also using the default pit and filter values. I have only changed the dynamic notch filter corresponding to the Betaflight wiki recommendations. I'm on the field now to start my first test flights. On my first flight I'm showing you the iFlight HL7 with a T-Motor F80 Pro 1900 kV motors and 7 inch HQ propellers. Unfortunately I only own these propellers at the moment. I'm still waiting to receive a set of the Dialprop Cyclone 7 inch propellers. All in all the T-Motor F80 Pro are pretty powerful even on a 7 inch quad powered by a 4S battery. But I'm not happy about the vibrations in the HD footage. I really would have liked to test the dial props on these motors too. Maybe using other propellers would lead to a better result. Now I have replaced the iFlight HL7 frame by the iFlight XL7. I'm using the same motors and propellers as on the flight before. All in all the quad flies pretty powerful with the T motors but it gets a lot of wobbles at low throttle. But it looks a bit better on mid and high throttle as on the iFlight HL7 frame. Now I'm testing the iFlight HL7 with the Racerstar Star RB motors and the 7 inch HQ propellers. The quad flies better as with the T motors but I'm still not satisfied with the result. Of course I have also tested higher and lower pit and filter values. But all changes didn't lead to a significant difference in particular regarding the vibrations.
And now I have installed the Razer Star RB on my XL7. And surprisingly, now this quad flies pretty smooth compared to all of my other tests before. So the iFlight XL7 frame plus the Razer Star RB and the HQ propeller seem to be a very good combination to get a smooth flying 7 inch quad. Apparently the T-Motor F80 Pro combined with the HQ propellers are not matching for a 7 inch quad. But it's pretty interesting that the Razer Star RB combined with the HQ props are working pretty good on the iFlight XL7 but totally different on the HL7. In the following I'm trying to explain the difference between the iFlight XL7 and the HL7 frame with the help of two black box locks of both quads. Here we can see a black box lock of the HL7 on the left side and a lock of the XL7 on the right side. The bottom lines of the black box explorer are showing the gyro scale data. And here is the difference. There seems to be a lot of more noise on all axes. In my opinion, this is caused by frame resonances. On the other hand, the filter gyro data are looking pretty clear, so the beta flight filtering works pretty good. To make sure that the noise definitely comes from the frame, I have also replaced the HL7 T-Motor FC and ESC stack with one of my XL7. So even with the Dalla C F722 on my HL7, I've got the same result. And now, last but not least, I have connected two 4S 1500mA batteries in parallel to get a 3000mA battery for doing a long range flight test. At the end of this video I'm going to show you the DVR with a flight time and the maximum travel distance of 10 km. Now I'm going to speed up the video until I'm going to show you the OSD with a flight time and travel distance.
Now I'm getting the low battery warning, so it's getting time to land my quad. Sorry for the crop DVR overlay. I hope you can see the OSD value of the maximum travel distance and the flight time. The maximum travel distance is shown at the bottom left and it's reaching 10 km. The flight time at the right side is going to reach almost 10 minutes. The batteries I have used are more than 2 years old and it was also pretty cold outside. Not the best conditions to get a very long flight time. But I'm pretty satisfied with my first test results. I will keep going on testing different hardware and I will also keep you up to date with my long range experience and test results. Feel free to tell me your thoughts about my tests in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.